Uh, my name is Kazu Iwasa from Japan. Uh, my topic is actually a bit changed during the stick uh, approach to the analysis of the characters and its current findings. Uh, written here, it reads, Belez uh, Nijo. Um, this means hello friends in uh, Sani, e, a manuscript of which I will mention today. So, Belez Nijo. Uh, my presentation consists of three parts. First of all, I will talk about a geolinguistic approach to the analysis of E characters and its results. Uh, there, maps of the E script will be shown. Then I will mention their practical use and their contribution to researching E manuscripts. Then, one E manuscript pres preserved at the Staatsbibliothek zu Berlin will be introduced. According to my analysis, it has turned out to be a manuscript written in Sunny. Uh, finally, future perspectives will be referred to in summary. Uh, today's presentation is actually based on my several previous works, as shown. And one of them, my ebook, remarks uh, maps of the e script based on the Swedish 100 word list can be downloaded uh, free of charge. Um, it must be superfluous, but let me just add introductory part of the languages of the ethnic group. Um, EU, the languages of the E ethnic group, belong to the Lolo Burmese language group of the Tibetan Burman language family. Uh, according to the official classification in China, there are six E dialects, northern, eastern, southern, southeastern, western, and central. Um, four of these six dialects I've ever mentioned, namely northern, eastern, southern, and southeastern, can be written with the E script, and numerous manuscripts in those dialects have been written in it. The southeastern group of the dialects, categorized thus by the official Chinese classification, are placed as one language of central knowledge by Bradley, 2002, with the remaining three dialects of northern, eastern, and southern dialects being placed as northern Lolish languages. Um, in this presentation, however, for, this, um, for the reasons of expediency, I use the official Chinese classification because all the data that I used for the analysis of the use and varieties uh, of the E script were found in only in Chinese publications, uh, which use the official classification, of course. Uh, furthermore, this work does not address the classification system. And here is a chart showing a dialect classification with or without the script. And besides correspondence between Chinese official classification and Bradley's, just as I have mentioned. And this is a map illustrating the areas with the E script and the dialect classification according to the previous chart. As we know, E characters show a great diversity from a region to a region. They seem to have been logographic, but now in most of the areas where we can find them, they are in the process of a transition from a logographic to a syllabographic system. Uh, interestingly enough, the E script was not designed for mutual communication, but for confidentiality, as Dr. Wasilewska points out in her previous works. Um, it is an exclusive writing system to PMOs, the religious leader among the people. In other words, E characters are very, very personal. As E manuscripts have been written by PMOs' hand from one generation to another, Many phonetic loans have occurred quite freely, and countless allographs have appeared without uh, restraint through ages. It will be carrying calls to Newcastle, but anyway, I mentioned this. Um, as a result, there is a huge dialectal difference as seen in the maps of the East script. Okay, let's move on to the section one, geolinguistic approach to the analysis of the characters and its results. Uh, why I started to draw maps of E characters? The biggest reason is 
that I wanted, of course, and I expected to clarify as concretely as possible how a characters have changed throughout history and to trace through uh, which path they would have propagated. With a view to investigating these matters, mapping a characters by meaning seemed to be promising. Now let's have a look at several maps of a characters and that results. Um, this is the first example. This map demonstrates AB distribution. From this map, we can tell that distinctive allographs in a red circle area may have occurred only in the eastern dialect region, in particular in Kuijo area. Therefore, this character, this character form can be regarded to be regional character in this Kuijo area. On the other hand, Lutra region. Um, Luchan area, um, uh, Luchan region, which also belongs to the same dialect as the Red Circle members in Guizhou, does not possess the identical form to those seen in Guizhou, as long as the data shows at the moment. So this fact also seems to support my idea that the form in question is regional character exclusively in Guizhou. And this is a map which shows uh, ABA distribution. In this kind of a distribution, peripheric distribution A um, is thought to be older than central one B, for example, uh, if there is no big movement of people, or if a feature of the A does not occur independently. Nevertheless, it is not possible to eliminate a strong possibility of phonetic loan coincidentally having happened in both areas, Shi De and Longlin. Just as seen now, one of the most frequent and remarkable phenomena in the E script is a phonetic loan, Jia Jie. This have happened with high frequency. Um, in my maps, more than 20 possible cases have been identified. Let's have a look at the examples. Um, this is a map of the characters, meaning many. And the characters seen in the area shaded in green are a pictograph that once meant a row. Therefore, the meaning they now bear of many must be a result of a phonetic loan. Um, this is a map of the characters meaning big. Um, I mentioned like this, a common character form is seen among those circled in red, and the character in Luna, shaded in red, is supposed to be an allograph of those. In Sita, the three characters circled in blue are considered to be phonetic loans due to their homonymity with E, they express water, for example, as well as big. Characters that are similar to them are used to indicate water where the E script exists. As a result of the analysis of all the E script maps based on the Swadesh 100 word list, basic characters have been set. Um, here are the criteria for determine, determining the basic characters. A given form is found in more than 75% of all representative points. A case where a continuum is recognized among characters. A case where at least a common feature is still obviously recognized. Um, here is a chart of the basic E characters from 1 to 20, then um, from 21 to 42. There are uh, 42 basic characters in total. They are tentative one, but 
um, anyway, I said, I've said 42 basic um, characters at the moment. Um, in this section, I will talk about the practical use of the basic characters, for example, in a case of determining provenance of e-manuscripts. For detecting provenance of e-manuscripts by utilizing the 42 basic e-characters, how does it work? Let's have a look. Um, the procedure for detecting provenance of an e-manuscript is very simple. First of all, we eliminate the 42 basic characters. In other words, basically, we do not have to take them into intensive consideration. Of course, it depends, though. Um, then the next step is to find out the distinctive characters, including such allographs in each region, which can be found quite easily by the e-characters maps as we have just looked in the AV distribution map. Okay, we will have an example of this more in detail. Um, here, we have a manuscript in BIULO as a typical case. Um, BIULO is Bibliothèque Interuniversitaire des Langues Orientales. Now it has joined BIULAC. Uh, I'm just giving you a brief introduction of this manuscript. I'm not mentioning the details, so if interested, please refer to my paper of the uh, 51st ICSTL, which is available online. Okay, will you let me state my conclusion first. This is a, a Nisu manuscript of the Cezanne dialect. The most striking feature of this manuscript is the fact that this is a bilingual manuscript, and this is a very rare case among the e-manuscripts. Um, the rightmost lines are translations in Chinese corresponding to Nisu. The middle lines are transcriptions by Chinese characters of corresponding to Nisu characters. And the leftmost lines are Nisu sentences. So we will have a look at these characters and examine them. Um, I skip the leftmost column because I have just mentioned this. Uh, please just have a quick look by yourself. And let's go to the middle column. Um, as stated in Iwasa 2008, the e language written in this manuscript is Nisu. Nisu belongs to Southern dialect according to the official classification in China. Nevertheless, it used to be classified as e de Lester, namely the Eastern E. Nasu in the inventory of um, BIULO, I hope it would have already been corrected. Then let's have a look at the uh, last part. Uh, e Chinese bilingual manuscript, which is hardly found both inside and outside China, except Huayi. This is not only partially translated in Chinese, but also transcribed by Chinese characters. Um, this is the very first character of this manuscript. It's a character meaning sky, by judging from its Chinese translation, as is obvious in the map. Um, as is obvious in the map, an identical character is found in the southern dialect area around Shiping, uh, although a similar one is also found around Luchuan, of Eastern dialect. What its transcription more can indicate seems very similar to the, to the actual data more as shown on the map. Now let's move on to the second example. Um, this is the first character of the second sentence in the third line. In the map, identical or similar characters to this area found at Shipin and Shuanbei. Taking the transcription Ming and the actual pronunciation of this character in Shipin, Mi into consideration, it is highly possible to say this E character is typical in any way Southern dialect. And here's another character which seems to signify below. 
Um, as the data shows, identical or similar characters are only found in the southern dialect area around Shiping. Uh, the pronunciation suggested by k is similar to k of southern dialect. The fourth and the last example is this character. An identical or similar character to it is only found around Shiping of southern dialect. What can can indicate is similar to ka or ka of southern dialect. The character signifying sky is written like this and pronounced mu in southern dialect, whereas the identical character is pronounced as shi and means to die or death in eastern dialect, as indicated in the inventory of BIU a little before. Um, geolinguistic data also strongly suggest the E language written in this manuscript should belong to southern dialect or nisu as other characters demonstrated in this presentation are also typically found in southern dialect. Now I will introduce uh, the case of a manuscript of Sani preserved in Staatsbibliothek zu Berlin. In Staatsbibliothek zu Berlin, uh, there are four E manuscripts. It is said that the uh, collection of Francis Rock who is famous for his abandoned Tanashi collection. And three of them, their facsimile editions were already published in 1977 and 1980 by Klaus Janert. Uh, unfortunately, in these publications, there are not a few mistakes which appear to have happened in the photographic work or restoration of them. For example, in every two pages, we can find a wrong side of the page. Um, until I visited the Staatsbibliothek to Berlin in 2015, I had believed that there must have been only three e manuscripts there. In reality, there, are, there was one more, and this is Sani manuscript. Sani is one subdialect of the southeastern dialect of official classification in China. And Sani is spoken mainly in Shiling, the autonomous county of Yunnan province. It appears to have arrived at the library more recently than the other three, because this manuscript is not included in the works of Janet in 1977 and 1980. Therefore, it must have arrived in the library after 1980 uh, at least. According to the inventory, it seems to have been registered in 1999. Before I re uh, researched it, nobody had mentioned it. This means that pr nobody had realized that it is written in Sani. <coughs> um, following my tentative provenance detecting procedure, I have found several typical characters in Sani from the manuscript. Here are some examples. The left one, nge nge, uh, is a common form of a polar question in Sani. The middle one, manga, is a common negative form. Especially the character, nga, is very typical in Sani. It has not been found in other areas as far as I know. The right example, a or a, is a common prefix of nouns or negative particle used among um, children. Um, this is also very typical in this dialect and never found in other dialects. Here show the maps concerning the forms of to be and not to be. Uh, as far as I have found from all the data I referred to, we can see that the case of Sani is a distinctive. Um, no other area that possesses the identical or even similar characters. This one and this one. Here is also significant additional information about this manuscript. 
Uh, judging from the Chinese sentences written on the last two pages, this manuscript must have been written by a Bimo living in a village called Weizhetun in Guishan, Yunnan, China. Why? Because surname Xu appearing in these Chinese sentences is not found among Sani people, but Chinese. And the Chinese people with this surname lived only in Weizhetun village. Um, here, the left picture is one page of this manuscript. Due to the copyright, this image is what I copied during my research in Berlin. Um, shape and size, uh, length 26 centimeter by width 20 centimeter. Pages uh, 36 pages and 40 sheets, bound with threads on the left side. And light beige rough paper. And sentences are basically written from left to right and from top to bottom. Characters are mostly written only on one side. Um, there are 11 lines by 16 squares, about um, 1.5 centimeter by 1.5 centimeter on average. And uh, these squares are divided into three columns. All lines are in red. The characters are written with a brush mostly in Chinese black ink, but partially in red one. Written in pentasyllabic regulated verse, Chinese sentences are also written on the last two pages. Uh, as Professor Bender mentions, um, likewise, prefaces are found only occasionally and are often more in the vein of a disclaimer of performance about the author's lack of knowledge than commentary on the content of the work. Uh, this manuscript also has such a preface uh, with the author's seemingly modest statement or more accurately his request to readers for tolerating his fumble and the reason why he decided to write this work. Um, before stepping into examining the main part, I will demonstrate you when this manuscript was written. This is a very rare case as to the e-manuscripts because the production date is normally not written on them. However, in this manuscript, uh, there is description of the date of its production. This is mentioned in the very first sentence of this manuscript. According to it, it was written in 1934, uh, uh, it's Mingua, uh, 23rd year. As you can see here, an emperor does not exist, uh, 23 year, the dog year. Um, Umu, that means the emperor. Ma Zhu uh, doesn't exist. Mtsu uh, Siko, that means 23 year. And uh, the next line, law, is complete or, or full or filled or something like that. So already 23 years have passed or something like that meaning. And uh, Mu to make. Uh, Li is particle, uh, normally expressing a topic, so it used like topic marker, and qi kuo, that means dog ear. So a number doesn't exist, so that's why it means uh, ming guo. Um, the, the second line says um, tiger mouse. The first month of the lunar year, 12th day, rabbit day, on that day. Uh, here we have a pangolin as well as rabbit. In Sunny astrology, they used to have not a rabbit, but a pangolin. It is said that later they started to use a rabbit instead of a pangolin under the influence of Chinese astrology or custom. Um, the second line still continues, um, and it says, it seems that I cannot work. Kuma uh, I can't uh, do, I can't work. Kazvi, uh, uh, that means so, or that's why, or something like that. And in the third line, the meaning of its first half part is vague. 
So I dare not demonstrate it here, but in the latter half as displayed here, I wish, uh, I think or I hope, I have something in mind that means uh, something like this. Uh, I wish readers may not sneer at me. Uh, ta, that means prohibition. Uh, yela, that means uh, sneer at or um, deride or jeer or something like that. And uh, we can see the writer's request to readers for tolerating his fumble. Um, the fourth line is here. Actually, this sentence seems to continue. However, there is no following word. It says it has snowed, so that's why I cannot go to work. Vadla, uh, uh, it snows. Ka, uh, so that's why. No uh, ge, I can't go to work. Ka, that's why, or something like that. But there is no following word. And the line still continues, and it says the person living here is 23 years old, then writes this. Or when the author is 23 years old, he writes this, or something like that. So it's all that the person, uh, normally it writes differently, but here um, the person used um, anagraphs actually a uh, phonetic loan, I think. And it, um, he is 23 years old. Kaku, um, that means to, to do, uh, but here it means to write. Um, also, I suggested that this manuscript should be a literary work. The further investigation implies that it may be a sort of sutra which tells how to find a suitable place and build an idle house. Um, to determine the content still require much more decipherment and investigation. Um, there are many parts Pimos are not sure. This is partly due to the individuality of the E characters in themselves, undoubtedly but also due to several instruments and vocabulary which are not used and known to Sunni people anymore today. Now, future perspective in the study of the e manuscripts will be mentioned for closing my talk. Um, as seen in the last section, while our technology advances and many old tools are abandoned, we are losing countless crucial clues for interpreting the e-manuscripts. This means a great loss not only to e-people, but also to all of us. Therefore, um, it is urgently needed to decipher as many manuscripts as possible. Um, Professor Bender also mentioned this. Uh, this matter, uh, and we have to uh, decipher as promptly as possible. Since most PMOs are advanced aged and uh, pessimistically very few successors to them, and it is inevitable to analyze written new languages from uh, from all the all the linguistic perspectives. Uh, in order to clarify the historical changes of E characters and a possible route or possible routes for the propagation of the E script, more data of E characters from more regions are undoubtedly needed. It is profitable to continue geolinguistic approach to the analysis of E characters. And here are uh, bibliographies. and the dictionaries that I referred to. And thank you very much, Nikubu.